Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Jenna. This week at the Round Table of Dim Lighting. Oh, have you been practicing? I, I d- what? No, I didn't practice, but I do. Re- I did remember this time that I needed to say that. At the Round Table of Dim, dim Lighting, of what? Well, you and I are just are are talking and without Rhett. Rhett is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am still unclear of all we're going to say today. Okay. <laughs> well, that makes two of us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, thanks for taking Rhett's seat, keeping me company today. Rhett is on spring break. Well, Shepard's on spring break, mm-hmm. which, you know, means, means, Rhett is on. means we have the luxury of being on spring break when our kids are on spring break. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, I'm holding down the fort. And um, I found a bruise this morning. Oh, my gosh. Look at this bruise on my arm. What in the... What, what? happened? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it... This thing, can you see that? The thing is so. Looks like an eyeball. You just noticed it looks today. Looks like a fish eye. Yeah, this morning when I was brushing my teeth, I looked down. And I was like, "Damn, there's like a somebody painted a blue fish eye on my forearm. That's yeah. that's as. I mean, that's bigger than a. This is that's about as big as a. It's bigger than a ping pong ball, smaller than a baseball. Mm-hmm. And then I touched it to make sure it was a. A bruise, and it was. It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Sometimes you got check. So that's my report this morning. Mystery bruise. Mystery bruise. I really think it's from a GMM episode um, when I ripped the skin off my um, knuckle. I think oh. I think I might have also hit this arm, and I don't remember it. And it's just now starting to bloom into a bruise, or yeah, I think it may drain all the way down to my hand, make my hand blue one day. Mm, mm-hmm. It's not that bad though, but you know, when you get to be my age, Jenna, these these type of injuries don't go away. It's like I'll have this bruise for yeah, tw- you know, three times as long as I would as, as as someone your age. Maybe, yeah, I'd say so. I don't know. I guess we'll find out for when I get to that age. Uh. Well, I'll get a bruise right now in that spot, and then we'll see how long it takes them each to heal. That's right. how. The- <laughs> Wait, you want me to? Hit, you want me, I'm looking for something to hit you with. You want me to hit you in the arm? No, no, don't hit me in the okay. arm. Okay. Right. Because I think as part of a bit in a podcast, it's appropriate. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I really don't know. <laughs> I'm a little sluggish this morning, honestly. That's all right. Um, I don't know why I'm so tired. <laughs> I uh, I stayed up watching this show on Netflix. I didn't know it existed until two days ago. And I was like, wait, I've read these books. This is the three body problem. Oh yeah. Like yeah. back like before the pandemic, I bought the first book uh-huh. just randomly off like the bookshelf. And I started reading. I talked about it on the show years ago. And then when the pandemic hit, I was like, I switched to listening to the other books, and there's, there's like sprawling. You you haven't read them, right? I haven't. I have the first one, but it's been sitting on my shelf, uh, looking at me up for a while. It's very. Um, the, they categorize it as hard science fiction, mm-hmm. which to me just means it's hard to understand. But it's like it's very, um, like it's it's it gets very technical at points. And I don't know if you're you you're into sci-fi type stuff. You, yeah, you, you you would like it, but that's why I have it. I just haven't got to reading it yet. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't for the pandemic, I I don't think I would have held on. But like, that was like the perfect time to get into it. But then I was like, just looking on Netflix, I was like, what? I can't believe I didn't know that this. Had you heard about it? Yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, it's like out now. I'm I don't know if I'm recommending it, but I stayed up. I guess a little bit later watching. It last night, mm-hmm. and maybe that's why I'm tired. But see, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna keep watching it. Um, the people who've watched it and the the ratings on it are the reviews are pretty high. And I really I did like the book. Yeah, and it's like it's such a sprawling adventure across like decades and millennia and time and space, and it's like got. Aliens and but it's it it's in the way that it unfolds. It's very 
it's it's very unique and inventive. Um, but it's also kind of bleak. That's that's why I don't yeah. know if I want to recommend it. Mm -hmm. But like, if you're really, I guess my recommendation is with the caveat that's like, if you're okay with like bleak stuff, the fact that it's um, so creative and so sprawling in its sci-fi nature, I think that's pretty cool. I'm back on the sci-fi bandwagon, but thanks to Dune. Yeah, yeah, it's got you back into it. And I got Lando into Dune. Like, I got him to watch Dune 1. So, like, now, before it goes out of the theater, we're going to watch Dune 2 in the theater. Oh, nice. So, I mean, it, Dune 2 really rejuvenated my appetite for sci-fi. I think that's the only reason I was like, yes, I've read this book. I love it. Because I re also, over the pandemic, I read Dune. Mm -hmm. And that was super complicated. Yes. And I, I, I just don't know what to think when I watched the movie and I was like, I've read the books, or I, in this case, the book, or with Three Body Problem, all of the books. Yet, as I'm watching the show or the movie, I remember so little of it. <laughs> like, Yeah, I was going to ask you if you thought I, it was like the book at all. Or... I don't know what it is. Like, <laughs> I, When you read a book, you remember it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, I mean, again, it's this I mean, bruising thing. I'm going to say it's an age <laughs> thing. I just, you know, I don't read a lot of books. So it seems like in the book space of my brain, it should be very, I mean, it's, it's dusty. There's cobwebs there. But when I put a new thing in that area, it's, if there's a cordoned off book area in my brain, I should be able to remember the few books that I've read. Well, I guess, but you also, there's other things that have to go into your brain. I don't know. I read a lot of books. I don't think I'm protecting my book yeah, section. I read, I read a lot of books, so like they, they kind of go out of my brain sometimes, too. And if, they, if it's similar plot lines from different series, like I'll get... I'm re currently reading three books at the same time right now. So there's that. <laughs> same genre? No, different genres, all like, of them. But are they all uh, fiction? Uh... Actually, none of them are f fiction right now. Like, what type of stuff are you reading? Because I thought you read, like, demon romance books. Yes, I do <laughs> read those books. I have no problem admitting that. Yeah, my, my uh, shadow daddies love them. <laughs> what is that? What is Shadow that? daddies? Yeah, no? what okay. is that? Shadow daddies are, like, um, they're morally gray characters, but they, like, usually with wings, and then they end up... <laughs> Listen, it's This uh, is a this is a subgenre. This is a subgenre. This is a this is a type of character in this genre. Bad boys. Bad boys. Yeah, they're kind of bad, bad boys. boys with wings. Bat boys. <laughs> so what what did how bad do they get? Um they'll destroy the world for the woman that they love. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All mm -hmm. right. And are they the all by they one? Love, whatever. Is, or people that they love. There's, it's, it's, there's multiple authors. <laughs> there's multiple it's, authors. It's not just like one person who has the, right. the corner on Shadow Daddies. Right, right. Mm -hmm. okay. You can't have the corner on that. There's got to be multiple. Is there a Barnes & Noble section called Shadow Daddies? Oh, my gosh, I hope so. We should tell. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, recommend or, that. So that's the rec. What, I mean, where are you finding them? <laughs> Fantasy? It's a uh, fantasy romance. So is it like, is it hard sex? Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> okay. They, yeah. Yeah, in All some right. of the books, it is. Yeah. And it's, what else do I want to ask about Yeah, this? I didn't know that we were going here today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And have they been made in any movies? Shadow Daddies. Not movie. yet, not yet. But um, a few of the series have been um, uh, the the rights have been optioned. Of course. Um, to become series, I think, and not movies. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how that all goes. Um, Three Body Problem <laughs> has an interesting tone to it. It's like at first I was like, is there a bit of it's what i call cw but like this whole like b bit of tropish characters and there's like it's all about like their interactions like oh are they hooking up or not mm -hmm. 
Like I actually thought there might be a little bit of that and there wasn't any of that in the book. Like there was some love, but it was like unrequited and it was, it basically was just a setup for being like never being together. Oh. Uh-huh. Um, but there wasn't any like, I mean, there wasn't no shadow daddy stuff. <laughs> so that scared me a little bit, but I don't think that's happening because I'm not as I'm not as into that. Yeah, if you don't want to read that kind of uh, stuff, you don't have to. But that's not what you're reading right now. What are the things you're reading? I am reading the Sound of Music story, the making of, and the like the about the true, uh, the true life story about the people, the the Von Trapp family and all of that. Okay. So I'm reading that one now and also No sex in that one. No, no, okay. there isn't. Yeah. Lots of stuff about musicals and, and, and how how to you know, Rogers and Hammerstein and all that. And it's fun. All right. Educational. I haven't I haven't seen yeah. I've seen clips of the sound of music. I'm listening to oh, you've it's, only oh, It seems beautiful. It is beautiful. And all the songs from it you think are these staples that have always been these songs have always been around, but really it was just made for the musical, The Sound of Music. But because they're done so well to seem like Austrian folk songs. Oh. Like um, um, Do a Deer, uh, like that song, uh, the Do Re Mi. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, and like, then, uh, 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 uh. exactly. And then these are a few of my favorite things song, that when they're in the rain. And- That's that's pretty iconic. Uh-huh. These are a few of my favorite things. Yeah, that's from the, that is not uh, a song that existed before the musical. You know, Andre three thousand covered that song excellent in the Love Below, and it's like totally wild. Okay, isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's iconic. It's an iconic song. Iconic. It's an iconic song, and you mm-hmm. start to think that it's been around forever. What about? I'm just 16 going That's, on 17. That was How that do was, I know all of you? I, I know you do. Maybe you I have all. seen it. So do you like musicals? Are, is this how you get into liking musicals because it's uh, the sound of music? That's, <laughs> I don't know. I, you know all the songs. Edelweiss, you remember the, the, when they start singing about that? I don't like that one. Oh, fine. <laughs> I love that one. Edelweiss. It's so cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. I guess I have seen it. Is there's a. What happens at the end? There's like a stepdad. There's uh, a there's a there's a guy who shows up, and he becomes the dad. N- no. Uh, <laughs> he right? uh, uh, Maria goes um to like nanny for this widower, this right. man who has spoonful of sugar helps the medicine. That is Mary Poppins, but also a musical. That song. <laughs> And oh, it's the same. Uh, they're you, both nannies. They're both nannies, and they're both um, the same actress. Same actress. They're both Julie uh, Andrews. Julie Andrews. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So you're you're doing all right. Oh. She did um, Mary Poppins before The Sound of Music, but but Mary Poppins did uh, wasn't out yet by the time that The Sound of Music uh, was filming. So she was still like a um, unknown. She was still an unknown, and like the the they had to fight for her f- to be cast. But she's, I mean, obviously, it's iconic. Anyway, yeah. so that's one of the books I'm reading. So, so they came out basically the same time. Mm. Sound of Music and Mary Poppins, I mean. Yeah, not too far apart. In yeah. f- filmed and released opposite. No, uh, she did Mary Poppins first and it came out first. Oh. But it wasn't out by the time she started filming. Gotcha, gotcha. But, um, yeah, they got to see, like, uh, a daily of her as Mary Poppins. And we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, please. We need her. All right, so what's your other two books? I'm also reading Extremely Online. I think it's written by Taylor Lorenz. Uh, oh, okay. Um, about the the history of the rise of internet everything, which has been kind of we fascinating. Were, I, I thought we were supposed to be interviewed for that at some point, but then I don't think that happened. So far, you're not in it. I don't think I'm in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But I it sounds familiar because there are parts of it where I'm just like, the guy should have been interviewed for this because yeah. it's very much, yeah, it categorizes of like how it all began and, and how monetization happened and who kind of started that and talks no about mentions, YouTube. No mentions of me yet? Not yet. I'll let okay. you know. Smosh has been know. mentioned, Dean and Anthony. Well, okay. <laughs> and what's the third one? The third one is uh, Grief is a Thing with Feathers, I think is the name of it. It's 
it's actually a novel or, or, or a memoir kind of, but of like, so it's not really, it's true, but not like it's his take on the grief of losing his wife, okay. but it's, it's written in a way that's really innovative and new. It's a pretty, it's a fairly new book. So I would recommend that for people who want. What some, do you mean? How is it? It's written, written in, a different way. in different perspectives. Like it's him, and then you see the perspective of his two boys, and then the perspective of this crow character that comes in, who is like kind of this antagonist, but also this healing quality of their. It's like a ver- it's like a version of his grief that's pulled apart from him, almost. Hmm. And um, and is it by chapter like? It's Each chapter is a that. different point of view. It's actually shorter than that. It's like it's like a page to three pages of one perspective, and then it switches to another. So it's almost like really, it it's almost like little poems together. Like uh, it's really good. I am. It's it's. I haven't read anything like it. Hmm. Uh, I would. Yeah. It's really fun. Okay. Uh I'm not. I'm not currently reading anything. <laughs> That's okay. I'm trying to remember. To. I'm you trying to, to remember the things I've read so that I can watch the shows and compare them. Yeah, yeah. That's all you need to do. <laughs> now you have to go back and read the all those books again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to make this whole podcast just just about me digging into your brain. Jenna. Okay. <laughs> now the thing that I did want to ask you about because you told me weeks ago and we didn't get to it when, when Rhett and I were talking about our trips. Mm-hmm. And we mentioned, but didn't get into, your epic solo trip. What are yeah. you calling this thing? It's it's called the SoCal Challenge. SoCal Challenge. Uh-huh. Um, so you did everything that Southern California offers in one day. Yes. You yeah. were in the ocean. Mm-hmm. You were on the snow uh-huh. in the mountains. And then what was the third one? Desert. Desert. Mm-hmm. Okay, within like twelve hours. Yeah, yeah, within like twelve hours. <laughs> okay, that's crazy. I want to get into that, <laughs> but I also want to remind you oh, that yeah. we released a record, mm-hmm. um, epic rap battle collection. Let me put this over here. Um, of course, we release a vinyl on the Mythical Society every year. Uh, exclusive over there for third degree members. If you're a third degree member, you automatically qualify. You're going to get this thing. If you're not a third degree member, join Third Degree Monthly by April 30th to get this. Um, I'm pretty excited about this because it pulls together all of our epic rap battles. So we we got three of them over the years, including Epic Rap Battle Nerve versus Geek, and then on the on the flip side, we've got brand new remixes of all of these. Um, Totally updated. So uh, get that by joining uh, Third Degree of the Mythical Society. Ear Biscuits is supported by Butcher Box. I love Butcher Box because they send me my meats and then it gets me out there at that grill. The food is high quality and you can trust it. 100% grass fed beef, free range organic chicken pork raised crate free and wild caught seafood with no antibiotics or added hormones. ButcherBox is delivered right to your door and you never have to pay for shipping. Plus your box plans can be curated and customized to be perfect for you. They even give you exclusive member deals as well as recipe inspiration, guides, tips, and hacks in every box. Today ButcherBox is giving you free ground beef for life of your membership plus an additional $20 off your first order. Use the link butcherbox.com slash ear and use code ear to get free ground beef for life plus $20 off your first box. That's butcherbox.com slash ear and code ear. Ear Biscuits is supported by Mando. What's the most valuable thing in life? Well, you know, smash burgers, probably love. I'm gonna go with love. And what's the second most valuable thing? Well, could be time. Uh, could be purpose. Uh, I, I'm gonna go with how you smell. Sometimes paranoia can seep in on how you're smelling throughout the day, but you don't have to be paranoid about how you smell anymore with Mando whole body deodorant. That's right, it's for all of your places that you wanna smell good. 
and it's effective and long lasting. Here's why, Mando doesn't cover up odor after the fact with heavy fragrances like certain other deodorants. It stops odor at the source by blocking the bacteria on your skin from eating your sweat, which is the actual cause of BO. What does this mean? It means Mando is clinically proven to control odor for up to 72 hours. That's a long time. So give yourself the precious gift of confidence and get yourself some Mando whole body deodorant. And I got a special offer for you. New customers get $5 off Mando's best-selling starter pack with code EAR at shopmando.com. The starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like the mini body wash or deodorant wipes, and shipping is free. Luckily, there's a discount code to help you get hooked on one of the top smelling whole body deodorants on the market. Again, new customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack. Use code EAR at shopmando.com. S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com. Um, all right. I've heard of this concept before. Uh-huh, yeah. But I don't... I don't think I know anybody who's done it <laughs> until you. So how long have you been thinking about doing this? Uh, a few years since I heard about it. Okay. And then you were just like looking for the right opportunity or the right person to do it with or people? Uh, right opportunity because I did it by myself. Did you always know you were going to do it by yourself or it was like that was in flux? That, I, I'd say that was in flux. I knew I was going to do it no matter what. Um, but whether someone would join me or not was kind of... Up in the air. And that's something that always intrigues me about like the things that you do, like you do ambitious things alone. And it's, I think that's one of the reasons that I get, I gained some more confidence to start doing some things on my own, like, you know, the recent ski trip or the solo trips before that. Mm -hmm. um, and now I just kind of relish the opportunity to do that. They're fun, yeah. Yeah, because what, I did, I did like, I went to the Grand Canyon by myself once, and that was right. kind of the jumping off point when I told y'all about that. That was fun. That was cold. <sighs> yeah, you don't want to be too cold. I was very cold. Was... Well, if you're getting in the ocean, this was a few months back now. I mean, you're going to be, you were, you, were, you didn't surf, you kayaked. Right, yeah, I did All my right. version of it. Okay. Because, like, typically it's done where you, you surf, snowboard, and then end up in the desert. But I, I'm not a surfer or a snowboarder. I'm a kayaker okay. and a skier. Okay. So I was like, this is my version of so it. It doesn't count, but it does you count. can at least do it. You at least did it. <laughs> I did. I went. I did the ocean. I did the, I did the mountains. Yeah, I did but the it's, not, it's not the thing. You didn't I know. Do right I'm, things, well, but. I'm not cool. I didn't do the cool things, I think. So <laughs> did you kayak with a guide or a group or did you just go out where did you go i went to marina del rey okay because you can rent kayaks there but yeah i just yeah. went by myself and rented a solo kayak and kayaked around the the like bay and everything okay. you you didn't hit the waves i didn't you hit didn't the waves the except when the, the except marina. when the some of the, the boats would come by but like i saw like sea lions and there's sea lions that were like swimming around my kayak. It was very cute. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Could you have access to the uh, the Venice canals from there? I don't think I I'd think have you access have to go from around. there. Yeah, you you have to go around. If you don't know the, the so Venice Beach, there's like a community that is built around canals like v the mm -hmm. Venice, but and and then there's like these bridges that go over them and connect like the 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 little streets and mm -hmm. it's pretty wild. It's cute. People, yeah, they they get around on their kayaks and on their little boats and stuff. Yeah, and I was gonna take like back when I was first into stand up paddle boarding, I was looking for a calm place to go, and I was like, we can go there. But then it's really hard to find a parking space, and you feel like you're in people's backyards. Yeah, when you're over there. Mm -hmm. But so you stayed in the bay. Yes, I did. Um, I call it the bay, but the marina or whatever it is. All right, I guess that counts. Did you get wet? I did. And how early? Because I had to get the kayak into the water. Okay. And out of the water. And how long, how early did you get there? Uh, they opened at nine, so I oh, got there. Oh, that wasn't, okay. 
All right. So I did it in less than 12 hours. So I'm trying to figure out. So if you're if you're not starting kayaking until 9, mm-hmm. did you like just do it for 10 minutes so you could get on the road? No, I did it for an hour and a half. <laughs> All right. I kayaked for an hour and a half. Kayak for an hour and a half. Yeah, I got a little blisters on my hands. Not and, anymore. They've healed. And then what? And then I drove to, uh, oh, well, I had everything packed in my car already. And so, like, I did, like, a little quick change because I got, I had gotten wet and I was wearing a bathing suit. So I was, like, in the parking lot. Just, you know, you wrap a towel and you figure it out. And There's then, an art to that. There's an art to that. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, when we, when Rhett and I first started uh, surfing out at, uh, we would go out to Sunset Point. I mean, when we lived over on the, like, in the Sherman Oaks Encino area, it was You're so much, much closer. Easier. Mm-hmm. Like, um, we did that when you first started working for us, right? We were, no. Yeah. We were still surfing to get them out. You were still surfing, yeah. I remember I um, I would check the surf chart every right. now and then for you all to see. If... So it was like right when you started. Because mm-hmm. there was a lot of Fridays that we would go. Yeah. I miss that. It's just so much, we're so much further now. It's so much harder to get there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we had to master the art of, the 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 surf change. Yep. Mm-hmm. I had you, my own version of it, but I didn't have a wetsuit. But I had like my bathing suit, and I'd gotten wet, and I was. Yeah. I'm about to go into the mountains in the snow, so I was like getting on my bottom layers of snow outfit. It's kind of like a self-paced um, Iron Man. Yeah. But. But a much more funner version of that. It was much more fun. Like a much more my speed Iron <laughs> yeah, Man. Yeah. I'm, I would never, like, I do not like swimming. I actually hate swimming. Mm-hmm. And th- the thought of swimming for a long distance, like, I don't know how to do it, and I don't have any interest in learning. Yeah, I won't. I won't do that. Um, that's wild. Iron Man, no. A mud, uh, Tough Mudder, I did that. That's fun. Because it's like... Um, obstacle courses. And yeah, it's not. It's got more gimmicks. Yeah, there's more gimmicks, and they give you a beer at the end. It's great. They, yeah, <laughs> they give you a beer at the end. Um, okay, so you did that, and then you were doing the quick change. Uh huh. And then I got in the car. Your, you threw on your layers to then drive. Where did you? No, Big I didn't bear? throw all my layers on. I just threw on the the bottom layer. So okay. just like some some leggings and then a, a shirt. Okay. Yeah. And then um, my flip flops because I was like, well, I'm not, I don't need to put on like boots yet. So, where you went to Big Bear or where? I went to Big Bear, yeah. Yeah, which I guess is the closest. But mm-hmm. that's still like a. It was about two hour drive. Two, two hour drive? It took me about two hours because I get stuck in a little bit of traffic. Okay, so, so nine, 10, 11. 12. So, you probably got there at like two, one thirty. One thirty, yeah. And then you, you, you had to rent skis and. All mm-hmm. that stuff. I'd already, yeah, I'd prepay it. And like by the time I got there, there wasn't a line. So I was, I got in and got my skis really quick. I was on the slopes by two. And then, so you knew you had to be at the desert. Uh huh. So, like, how much did you ski? About two hours. Two hours. About two, of two, two and a half hours. I think, yeah, I got out of there about 4 30 or so. Are you talking to people about like what you're doing? A little bit, yeah. I did um, uh, at the kayak place. I told them what I was doing, and they were like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, they, they were, like, really encouraging. It was really cute. And then um, I, when I was skiing, well, I hadn't skied in a long time, so that was I, – I only fell twice. Um, the, the first time I went, because uh, I, I was like, I'm going to do the bunny slope. Yeah. And get my bearings again. Um, fell right off the, the ski. The uh, ski lift? The lift, Yeah. <laughs> But the person was super nice. They were like, you had it. You had it. All you did, you just went a little too far back on your heels at the end. Just stay forward. And I was like, all right, I'll remember they that for next time. had to stop it for you. No, they didn't have to stop it for me. I got out of the way fast enough. You I know. Just I know how to fall out of the way. <laughs> I can okay. fall very well. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's embarrassing when, you're, when you do something and it's like you feel like that the hundreds of people <laughs> are all impacted. It, that's the yeah. high pressure point. No one was impacted. I knew that I was falling, and I found a way to fall out of the way. You see what I'm doing here? I'm pinpointing the most challenging parts of your journey, <laughs> which is trying to keep your towel up while you take your bathing suit off. Yeah, that's challenging. And then trying to um, 
not fall when you get off of the ski lift. Yeah, yeah, and not um, burden anyone behind me <laughs> with my uh, yeah. figuring out how to ski again it's all mindset. I could have asked someone. I could have, uh, no. I was like, I'm just going to get out there and I'll just do it. But I only, yeah, and then I fell one more time on that first run and then I had it and then I was good. I didn't you, fall again. You went to the uh, the Black Diamonds? No, I ended up just doing, I think the hardest I did was like a green or a blue. And is there like a, a, a mental component to this? Like when you're, when you're doing it, are you like really thinking about the fact that I'm doing this? Is that an advantage to it? You know, it's oh. like, I, I'm... I was I was in the ocean and now I'm on this mountain and I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I'm touching the snow. And it's giving me some perspective. Yeah, like I still smelled like salt water. That was kind of cool. I was like skiing and I was like, I still smell like salt water. <laughs> this that is, is cool. wild. I like the fact that it's it's this um there it's an objective based thing where you're like basically getting in your body you're doing stuff you're being active you're 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 being alone you got a mission mm -hmm. you've got things that it, it it's a new experience or a new combination of things that it is this challenge of can i do it and what can i get out of it yeah right? i guess that's what i'm wondering is that like were you thinking about what am I getting out of this as I'm doing it? Or was it just for the shits and giggles of it? Both. Because yeah. getting the, the shits and giggles are something you get out of it, you know? Yeah. And it was fun. And, but yeah, I, I wanted, I always like doing things that are really grounding for me. Right. So uh, the ocean, of course, is extremely grounding when you're out there and it's nice and quiet. And then I'm on the slopes and all I hear is just like my my skis and... It's the best. It's really, it's really a great feeling, and you're, you're out. I love being out in nature and and having those those moments of like, where you're up on the mountain or doing, or you and you take like a breath and just think about it for a minute and be in the moment. And you're like, wow, I, I'm doing this. That's right. cool. Like I haven't skied in like five years, and I'm doing it. I'm doing. It. I'm <laughs> doing this right now. Yeah. And I'm not, there's no room, I'm not giving any room to anything else. Yeah. Or very little room. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that, that's when things get special, is when you're, especially if you planned it and you're looking forward to it, I just love the anticipation, but then it's when it, when there's the payoff of, I'm here and I'm in this moment, mm -hmm. and I'm not allowing the other things to, to creep in. Yeah. You know, I think that's, I, I think that's what a lot of people who like go out into nature they that's what they they start to crave you know. Mm -hmm. I think for me it's something that I'm st I'm still developing that the muscle of enjoying the moment. Yeah, you know, just saying, oh, I don't. My mind doesn't have to be elsewhere, or I'm aware that my mind is elsewhere, and I can bring it back to this moment mm -hmm. type of thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, for me, it's always like that, especially lately, I'm going back to the centering thing for me is my walking the dogs. You yeah. know, I've talked about this a number of times, but I think this, that's kind of like the, that's the touch point for me. If like, if I've got enough headspace to where I'm like in a good place, I can tell when I'm there. Mm -hmm. Like this morning, it was like, I was so groggy, and then I was, but it's a good check-in because you can tell, okay, the walk is very much the same every day. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if it feels totally different, then it's most likely coming from me, right? So like one of the things I did this morning was to say, well, I'm just going to fill my lungs with as much air as possible, and it was cold. And I just like held it in there, and I'm walking the dogs, and mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, this, and then I, I did eventually breathe out. Yes. You got to kind of, yeah. you got to do that. But it it was like this, it was like hitting this reset button. Yeah. And I feel like your journey 
is like that on a on a big scale. Yeah, because right? I do my I'll do daily things like you have your dog, you walk your dogs, and yeah. I have my daily like different meditative practices that I do, or even like little check ins with my body. Like right now, I'm gonna. I'm gonna lower my shoulders. I'm gonna release the tension in Come my on. jaw. <laughs> Just feeling li- <laughs> li- little check-ins, but like totally. we have, we have those daily check-ins. But it's nice to do larger um, check-ins with with things like, on the further uh, outskirts of like just in my body. Like get even further, like grounding yeah. in a much larger something that feels much larger, like being out in nature, grounding. Take and you take a whole day for it. Yeah, I was talking to Lincoln. He, you know, he was he he's going back to school today. So I was talking to him actually yesterday, and you know, he's really gotten into his health and like working out and stuff. But um, the thing that he was describing, I was asking him about like, how has it been for him on spring break and being home, and like he still goes to the gym here, and like he'll go with his friends some, but he's like. Yeah, I just haven't, I haven't been getting enough protein. Is what you know? He like he understands all of his it's macros always and protein. stuff. Why, it's, yeah, always it's always protein. protein. But <laughs> the thing that he said was, he was like, I was like, well, how can you tell? And he said, well, when I'm working out here, I can tell a difference that I just don't have. I don't have every. My body doesn't have everything that it needs to do what I want to do or what I'm used to doing at school. That is wild that he is aware of that. And that's what I told him. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, you know what? That is, that's a real mind body connection that yeah. you under that you understand. Like you're in touch enough with your body to know when something's off, and you can start to make connections as to why. Mm-hmm. When I was his age. The thought never crossed my mind. No, me you know, either. I mean, mm. I I wasn't. Yeah, I mean, we we weren't in the information age, so it wasn't like it, it was. It wasn't really that available. All this mm-hmm. information, like once you want to get into something, now you can really, you can instant, almost instantaneously learn everything there is to know about something. But whether you incorporate that, integrate it into your life, is another question. And the fact that. He was doing that to a point where it's like he has this body awareness, and I just, and I told him I was like you know that's that's really good that's yeah. that's that's the thing that I'm trying to cultivate now. Yeah, I same. I'm still adult. working on that. <laughs> and it's um yeah, I mean like I didn't know what embodiment was, mm-hmm. and I cause, and I didn't realize how much I spent my basically my entire life in my head. So it's things like this, this these exercises now for me that are like it's training. Yeah. The walking the dogs, the um if yeah, if I'm planning tri- like that ski trip, if I'm doing stuff like that, that's mm-hmm. that's what that's why I'm so fascinated about this excursion for you because it's like my, I'm interested in like oh, what's my version of that? Yeah. What could be my challenge? So you're up there on the mountain, mm-hmm. and you're you you actually are able to think about these things. Yeah, yeah. And I ended up, um, I I did make a friend. I ended up being on the ski lift with uh like b- uh, with a person because we were both yeah alone. And I talked with him. His friends just bailed for the day. So um, (laughs) because I I was like, oh, are you here by yourself, too? And he was like, well, my friends bailed. And I was like, well, I want to keep skiing. He's like, hell yeah. And we we ended up getting stuck on the ski lift for a minute together and chatting. Because somebody else fell at the top. Yeah, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. But yeah, and um, talking with him kind of had me be like, oh, yeah, this is. This is different. It and then having that moment with a stranger asking me all the questions about it was really cool too. Because I was like, "Oh yeah, I guess I didn't. I, I I'm doing it, and now all I'm thinking about is like, yeah, I'm doing it, and I'm here. Mm-hmm. But then he having someone to chat with um, that was a stranger gave me a chance to have a little bit of perspective in that moment of like, oh yeah, yeah, this is. I should take a moment and recognize that this is kind of cool. <laughs> For real. Yeah. So then. Uh, he came out to the desert with you, or no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. We got off the ski lift and went our separate ra- ways. Okay, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, of, of course. I don't He's know. Nice man. Know, His name is Michael. He I lives in West Hollywood. It yeah. <laughs> it wasn't anything. He he's the he's a lovely man to chat with. Um. Yeah, he lives in West Hollywood. 
So then, she wasn't interested in me. <laughs> when you, when you, oh, gotcha. When you left Big Bear, did you go? You went over the like the. You kept going over the backside of the mountain. I did, which I'd never done that drive before. It was really pretty. Well, the only way I've done it is on like off road trails. Actually, there were a lot of off road trails around, but the you one didn't I that, right? I didn't ha- no I didn't so, because. The desert part of this was just camping in the desert. Mm-hmm. You don't have to like. I don't know what you would do in the desert. Um, I guess not, you could like because they sand activity. people like do, do like the little sand dunes surfing stuff, and uh, you could do activities. What's, what is the coolest version of the SoCal Challenge in the desert? Oh, it's probably the sand surfing that people do or like having like a four-wheeler and... and yeah. Yeah. Like a razor or something. Yeah. Was... Something cool. No, I, just, I camped. <laughs> I've seen people... I've done the sledding on the sand dunes. Oh, that... See, I've never done that on sand dunes before, so that would be fun. And then you could get a snowboard, like a sand board. Yeah. And... If I had to do it again now, I would probably try the sandboard and standing on it. But like, it seemed a bit, yeah, sketchy. Yeah, yeah that's one I thing had, I haven't done. I want to hit the sand. Uh huh. So, so you were like on uh, BLM land, like. Bureau of Land Management. No, you can, you I can use, camp anywhere there. Yeah, you can. I I used Hip Camp though. Um, so private, a private space Mm -hmm. it's like airbnb but for camping for camping so Mm -hmm. so you're on somebody's land yes and you're paying them through the app Mm -hmm. and then you can kind of you've done that before yeah i've done that before i've never done well maybe i have done a hip camp thing once i think when i visited lily in a in a camper van once i stayed Mm -hmm. on a place like that i always like it they're always real they're always real interesting well mine whenever i've done them they've literally been on like very sparse lands like there's like you can't see the owner's house no uh uh-uh what was this one like was it uh there uh they they had had like i also like it because um there's bathrooms typically like there's some sort of setup you know even if it's just a hole in the it, uh, that's dug in the ground with like a little toilet over it, which oh. was at the one that I was at. Oh, okay. Um, but it was like there's something there. Uh, but yeah, they had little string lights and they had like um, a concrete uh, slab. Uh, yeah, well, like it was a concrete thing for the the fire pit. Like they had that little made up, which was really helpful because uh, it was very windy when I when I got there. Oh, was and it, it was dark? after dark. Yeah. Oh, I hate that. I know. <laughs> that's the worst that's that's the worst when you like show up you're trying to show up yeah. at a campsite and it's already dark. Yeah, I knew I like, knew I'm I was full gonna... I'm going into full dad mode when I'm like, well no matter what we're doing this SoCal day, I gotta get to I gotta find a campsite before it's dark. Yeah, that was my goal, but then I, yeah. you know, I was having fun skiing and and then like when I was driving out of the mountains there was like this really pretty sunset of like just the desert was all I could see ahead of me. And I was like, I've never yeah. seen that before. And so like I pulled over uh, and then just like stared at the view for a while. And then I was like, okay, I got to get to my campsite. <laughs> you got, see, you got nobody to answer to. You got yeah, nobody to tell over. you, well, we need to go. It's going to be dark at that campsite. Yeah. That's what I, I'd have been like at that point. <laughs> It's going to be dark. If yeah. we don't get it, it's going to be dark. I mean, I'm only... We I'm, might not find it. I'm only making things difficult for myself, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's... If I'm going to... If I'm going to be mad at somebody, it's going to be me. <laughs> yeah. It's nobody blame, to blame but, but yourself, but yeah. nobody to take into account. Yeah, yeah. But I got there, and it was it was quite windy, and it was... Yeah, it was well after dark. It was full dark. Oh. Um. Uh. But I managed to find the campsite. It took me a little bit, because it was remote. Um, but I found my campsite and, uh, thankfully that, uh, the fire pit setup that they had was what it was. Cause I was like, all right, that's, that's great. I like turned my little, uh, headlamp on and then I had a- another little lamp and then I got the fire going immediately and would throw on, uh, and mess with it as I was pulling out the tent and all the other supplies. Okay. So and then- you, you slept in a tent, not in a car. Yeah, I I have a I have a tent that I've had for probably like a decade now that I can um I know I I know it like the back of my hand I could put it together no problem so I was like I can in do the dark. this in the dark yeah 
Yeah. That's good. It was hard um, because of the wind gusts. There were like 20 mile an hour wind gusts. Damn. <laughs> so I, at one point before I could finish staking in the tent, I'm literally just like holding it in place. From the inside? No, from, oh. from the outside. I'm like bracing it with um, the things that I put up. And I was like, oh, just let this gust go away. Just for, And I'd have to like hold it until the gust went away. And I had like my mallet in one hand and I would have, I had the stakes like in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's and then pretty, once yeah. the gust went away, I was like, okay. And I took a stake and would like like, na- like stake it the one side down in, and then I get ready and and there's another gust and I'd hold it in place and wait for the gust to go away and stake in. The thing. hills are alive <laughs> with the sound of wind. Yeah, <laughs> the hills were alive. <laughs> but I did it. I it only took me. I, it only took me like twenty five minutes. I'm good with tents, so like I just had to be patient and just wait until the gust went away. <laughs> the type the type of tent that I'm intrigued by now is is still the bed inside of a Sprinter van. You know, like once you go there, <laughs> it's hard to go back. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't really have a desire to go back, but I have seen this one type of tent that I'm like, that's a cool type of tent, even if it's just for a nap. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll nap in a tent. I just don't know if I want to sleep in a tent overnight. Is it like the singular one person ones that just pop up real quick? It's the ones that you couldn't do it in the desert because you need trees. Oh, or some, the, 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 yes. the hammock tents uh-huh. that you you string them up, but then they're they have like a rigid kind of a system in it. Yeah, where it's flat on the bottom, and then there's like a completely flat mattress that goes in it. Mm-hmm. Have you seen these? Yes, I have. Those and are then, cool. So it's a swinging hammock. Yeah. But it's off sturdy. the ground. Yeah. It's, it's just very sturdy and you lay on this thing and then it's, you know, it's got all these cubby holes inside of it where you can put all your stuff and hang your light and you yeah, get up cool. in that. <laughs> I assume if it's, you know, if it's cold, it'll be colder to be like elevated off the ground. But it seems very... I don't know. I just really like the idea of this thing. Yeah. I mean, I, you'd have to see. Uh, you can get one that's insulated properly. They're all. That's true. Yeah. And, and then. You just, you just wear uh, like a really thick. I have a really thick sleeping bag. Yeah. I've been in very cold. I've been camping in very cold weather before. And that's it, it, that's what happened to me in, in uh, at the Grand Canyon. It was snowing. It was snowing. Yeah. And I had. Um, thankfully, I, I, I'm pre- prepared. Uh, well, I didn't know it was going to be snowing, so I wasn't. I just always have things in my car. But you need a big dog for something like that. You got to have a dog down there yeah. in the bottom of your sleeping bag, no, or no. a medium-sized dog. Yep. Well, I'll have to rent a dog. <laughs> you could probably rent a dog. Yeah, we could probably. Yeah. There's there's places where you can rent a dog. Like I know in Hawaii, you can go to the local shelter, mm-hmm. and then you can. Like rent a dog for the day, like a dog that's you know like up for adoption, and then it's it's a really great system. Yeah. And then the dog gets attention and exercise and you know socialization, and then you bring them back at the end of the day, or you decide that you want to adopt. Yeah, this it's dog. really it's really right so that you fall in love with a dog, right, and then adopt it. Yeah. I wonder if there's that's some, a good system. If there's some of that in L.A. You could rent a dog to take it on the SoCal challenge. I don't next think time. so. I think there's str- I think there's stricter rules because just mm. to volunteer at an animal shelter in LA is is a long process. So I, I doubt you could be able to take a dog out of it for okay. a day. But it would be nice. But yeah, I didn't. Um, I just was cold. Well, I had. They want to um, make sure that you're I not have a like thermal, weird. You're um, gonna do something weird to dogs or something. Yeah. Okay. All right. I guess that's a good thing. Yeah. And also, well, um, you need to be pop- properly trained with them. Like, uh, they have strict rules. Like, if a dog were to uh, bite someone, um, even if it's just in a friend, even if it's just a friendly or scared kind of atmosphere, like, they can't be adopted for like three months. Like, it's a. So. Th- oh. So you have, have to. Have you done this training? Yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I did the training of volunteer at the Burbank Animal Shelter. Um, and if they bite, if if you take them out and they bite somebody, uh-huh. or if they bite somebody in the shelter. It, oh yeah, if, uh, one of the volunteers. Like if if they end up biting, even if they end up biting one of the volunteers, that's 
a few months, they're no longer going to be able to be adopted because they have to go on like that makes this. makes sense. Um, like it can't be taken out and played with either. It's a whole oh. thing. So you just need to be, you know, the the, the dogs have been traumatized. So they can't right. help it when they bite sometimes. So what were you going to say about? Oh, yeah. So I, I just have my sleep pad. It's, it's oh. like a thermal one. Um, uh, and then my sleeping bag is uh, up to, I, uh, it's good for as cold as like 40 degrees, I think. And uh, That's not much. No. I have like a... I think I have like a negative 15 bag because <laughs> I'm so hot. cold natured. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got to unzip that thing, throw a yeah. leg out. but Yeah. And also like uh, my tent, it's a, it's a four person tent. Oh. Um, it's fairly large. And like I never put the, the thing over the top of it, like the, 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 rain the tarp. Flap. I never put the rain flap over yeah. it because I'm like, I'm, I want to see. I'm out here. Yeah. I want to be able to see when I'm in the tent. 40. I bet it got below 40 out there, though. He, mm, yeah. Okay. But um, I have like other things, like a blanket, and then I have like an emergency. Um, I have an emergency blanket if I need it uh, that I just keep in my car. I have, I, my car is constantly ready to go to just get the fuck out <laughs> if ever. <laughs> like, I've got mm. my, t- I've got everything in my car. I've got my tent. I've got my sleeping bag. I've got my sleeping pad. I've got extra water. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just in my in my car, ready to go all times. So you could you, you could decide to camp right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just need to fill up my um reusable water jug that's in there. And then I'll be good to go. Okay. So, yeah. You got a shovel? So you can dig your own I got a little shovel in there. Okay. You mm-hmm. Dig your own bathroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not that ready. I mean, Christy bought like they're not go bags, they're like earthquake. Oh, the earthquake kits? Earthquake kits. Yeah. Like, we have one of those in each of the cars, but... I, I have one in mine, too. I guess yeah. I would figure out what's in the bag if the, if we were ever stranded anywhere. I, you know. Usually, uh, yeah, it's usually, like, um, water stuff, sometimes food. Band-Aids. Band-Aids, yeah. There's always first aid. Um, that's, yeah, it's, it's kind of standard. A fl- maybe a flare. No, there might pro- be, or a flare. glow stick or something. Okay. Sometimes they put emergency blankets in there in those too. Like a spear to like go fishing, a, a spear fishing. No, they don't. They don't give you anything to like, like have those kind of resources. So you slept there that night, mm-hmm. and then you got up the next morning. And that well, at what point had you done it? When you're going to sleep? When you wake up the next morning? Um, packing up. I when I was uh, standing around the fire. That was it. I was like. Yeah, you did it. I, I put my tent up. The trifecta. Yeah, I was standing around the fire. There's a little jackrabbit that ran by, and I was like, I did this. Yeah. <laughs> you felt good about it. I felt really good. I took a lot of deep breaths. I sang to myself, danced around the fire. You know, you got to, when you're out in the wilderness, you got to be silly. <laughs> you, you, you literally danced around the fire. Yeah. You ever danced around the fire? You should try howling at the moon, too. That's really fun. Alone. Yeah, yeah. I've never done that. I would. Well, you've you've done solo things before. You should, you I have not give it howled a go. at the moon. Do it, you, you should give it a go. Just to like let it all hang out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> okay. I I would definitely strip down naked in the in the desert all mm-hmm. by myself. Mm-hmm. And then if I'm naked, then I would probably I might I might go around the fire a few times. Yeah, because you gotta get warm up. Yeah, you gotta yeah. warm all sides. <laughs> all sides. If you're if you're naked, like a rotisserie chicken, just rotate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then I might throw I might throw in a hoot and a holler. Yeah. See, but I encourage all hooting and hollering. <laughs> that's a good that's a good release. I can understand yeah. that this would be a good idea. So you so you did it now. So now, do you have an idea of? What you want to do next? Oh, have you thought about it? Um, no, not not to like a uh, not my next solo thing. I mean, I've always got, I've always got a list of things I want to do. Those, they're never going to go away. Yeah, I mean, one of the books I'm reading is is because it. Um, I'm taking a trip later this year. Um, that's kind of a history kind of thing. So I'm like reading books about the areas that I'm going to. Oh. Um, where? Oh, I'm doing a, a river cruise on the Danube River starting in Budapest. Okay. Yeah. You yeah, told me about yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole, that, that's not solo. 
though. That, but that's a week. Yes. Yeah. Living, sleeping, living on a riverboat. Uh huh. And where would the Danube is? Where it's is in that? Europe. Yeah, it starts in Hungary. Well, that's where I'm starting in Budapest. Okay. Budapest. 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 Yeah, I know I'm supposed to say it that way, but when you say it like that in the U.S., people look at you funny and you're like, "Oh, he's a bougie," and like, no, but that's how it's pronounced. It's pronounced Budapest. Well, that's how. I mean, when I say Melbourne, you, we, we say Melbourne correctly. Right. It's Melbourne. But I've known people from my travel group. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to mention any names yeah. who know it's Melbourne, and they called it Melbourne for a while, and then in certain circles, they'd still go back. Back to Melbourne. Yeah, you can't do that. I know. I was like, I looked at, I looked at, it and I was like, oh, you went back. Uh huh. For the same reason, <laughs> don't want to be judged. Don't want to be judged. So you're, okay. So you're gonna be on a boat. Yeah. With friends this time. With my aunt Marina. Okay. It's yes, it's our right. first, like, auntie niece like adventure together, and she's never been to Europe. Oh God, this she's, is your idea. The, yes, she's um. I'm very proud of her. I'm very proud of her for like, uh, and I'm so excited to go on a trip with her. How but big yeah, is this the river? Is, I mean, it's this is not a big boat. Um, no, I guess it's not a, a very big boat. It's not like a cruise ship or something. No, this is a no, boat. it's it's a boat. Yeah, it's not a ship. I'd say, but, but it's I mean, probably I've, I've, not like. I feel like probably tumultuous about because it's, eighty people could be on it. Eighty, a hundred. Oh, okay. It's not the, yeah, it's not super small. It, yeah, it's it's not going to be too rocky because it's then a it's, river. And then it's du- it stops at all these different places like a cruise mm-hmm. ship would, but it's more. Yeah, we'll be stopping in like Vienna. and. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. Because you get to see, you get to traverse, but then you have the same bed every night. Mm-hmm. I get that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a different perspective of the countries that I'm going to. Is she going to like it? I think so. We're going to okay. have fun. All right. So, I mean, you, you're just, your capacity for like solo trip stuff. See, I, I feel like there's a little bit of a difference, right? Like, well, you tell me. For me, it's like, I take, I start to crave the solo trip thing because I'm never alone and I'm always... But you, I mean, you're alone I'm more. Alone often. You're alone yeah. more than I am. Yeah, I'm alone right? quite a lot. I I already I go on solo dates, but I take myself out on dates and just go. Yeah. And is that that's something you've? Has that always been the case? Like a part of your life? Because it's never been a part of my life. I've always been. I've never been alone. Yeah, I guess doing things by myself has always kind of been a part of my life. More so. Um, since I've been single for as long as I have, like I've, I haven't had a a relationship in like six years. Mm. So since then it's just kind of like, well, I'm just going to go and do stuff. I don't need to wait. I've always kind of been one of those. If I decide I'm going to do it, I'm just going to go and do it. How else I get out to Los Angeles, you know, from, from Tennessee, if not. So being like, well, I'm just going to do it. (laughs) What do you think that is like, is that? just always been a part of your personality or is that something that you like had to make a switch because there's people who will think about things but then they you know it's there's a difference between like aspirations and action Mm -hmm. you know and it's i feel like it's kind of a lifestyle and it's like you're if you're not in one track you if you're not in the track of doing Mm -hmm. It's hard to get over to that track. Like you it can, is. you can pl- you can really gear up and plan things out like yeah. okay, a, y- a year from now I've I've found that this this long weekend or this this frame of time I'm going to do this type of thing. Mm-hmm. But I I'm overgeneralizing, but I feel like that as humans we have a tendency to fall into, you know, into into a habits, but maybe camps of like I'm gonna, I might aspire, but I'm not as much of a follow through. And then I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out here and do this. I think it's a comfortability kind of thing. You get uh, because to get out and do those things, you have to be a little uncomfortable. Um, 
And I kind of enjoy that uncomfortable feeling. Like the, uh, like I've thought, because I am very much a planner. Uh-huh. I am very much, I'll think about it for years and years. Like I've I thought about doing the SoCal Challenge and what that would be and what I would do. And then the opportunity presented itself and I was like, great, I'm doing it. Me opportunity mean there was like a scheduling opportunity. There was a scheduling opportunity and I had done the math already on how much it would cost and I had points here and there. So like it worked out financially for me and um schedule wise for me. So it was right. one of those like I had thought about it for years and then like a, a week or two, a couple weeks out, uh it all just lined up, and I was like, "Well, it's not gonna get. I'm not gonna find a better opportunity than now, so I'm gonna do it." And that's kind of how I do things. I feel like is like I've thought about all the stuff already, but then once the opportunity presents itself, I don't spend too long weighing the options because I already did that. Right, right. If that makes sense. Yeah, because it's it's easy to talk yourself out of something. It there's is. There's always reasons to talk yourself yeah. out of something. Yeah, there's always a reason to talk yourself out of it. Sometimes you just got to be like, nope, i have just going to do it. That's what, I mean, that's why I wanted to talk about this, because I just, I, I'm energized by hearing about other people who've, like, just hatched an idea and then gone for it mm-hmm. and then followed through. And then if you feel uncomfortable, then you're like, you... It's interesting to me that you feel that you like the feeling of discomfort, but I assume that it's because what the feeling on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. It's like if you complete your workout, you have this feeling of accomplishment. Yeah. You know, even though it's like really hard to 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 get over the hump to actually do it. Yeah, it's like a it's like an exploratory kind of thing. It's like you the the payoff is Doing something I've never done and feeling a way I've never felt and learning as you well. You learn something about I'm, yourself. I learned something about myself. I learned something about wherever I am. Like, um, there's always something interesting that happens. There was a there was a scorpion in my tent with me when I woke up that morning, and it, it you know there there's scorpions mm-hmm. all over the desert. And I was like, oh, look at that! Never had to deal with the the scorpion. Where was he specifically? Um. Uh, uh, crawling around my sleeping bag, but like I needed to get him out of there because I was like I needed to pack up, and also <laughs> it's a scorpion in my tent. Um, so I got him, I got him like on my little Kindle, and then just like tossed my Kindle out of the tent. You threw the whole Kindle. <laughs> threw the whole freaking Kindle out of the tent. <laughs> oh my well, like, god! I didn't want to like smush it. I didn't want to kill it, but I also didn't want it in my tent. So I was just like. Whoosh, and the Kindle was fine. The Kindle, and the, the scorpion was fine. Every, yeah. Everyone was fine. You, did you try to throw it? <laughs> oh, I frisbeed it. You yeah. frisbeed it so that the screen was up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, so that, so that when, you, when it skidded across the desert, it was the backside of your Kindle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, to, to me, the, the, the energy that I get from your story is the type of energy that I'm hoping that, you know, you listening kind of get from what is that additional uh, motivation to say, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to follow through with this. Mm -hmm. I have this little idea or I heard, I heard about this thing or somebody did this and now I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put some plans in place or at least to be ready. Mm -hmm. If like, Okay, if the money comes together or if the schedule comes together, you know, there's still obstacles, I understand, yeah. for people to do things. But, like, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah. That people are, like me, are energized by this episode of, like, yes, there's something there's something that, that I can do for me mm-hmm. that is um, that's edifying that is rejuvenating, but also maybe a little stretching or... Yeah. Um, yeah, because when you, when you say you learn things about yourself, it's, these are things that you learn in your body, too. Yeah. It's like, and so then it, when, you, when you have some discomfort that you're going through, 
and then you come out the other side and there's a reward or there's a reward, then the reward starts to move back to be a part of the discomfort mm -hmm. is what I heard you saying. Like you like being uncomfortable because it's, it's now, it's part, the, the reward has moved backwards to be yeah. associated with that. Mm -hmm. And it's that, that risk is a reward. Yes. Yeah. The risk I is, a, and also a good mindset to have is like, things are going to go wrong. Like that scorpion, I I don't know how I was like. That's something I did not plan for. Yeah, and <laughs> and when you're alone, there's this level of self reliance that's like you just got okay, figure it no, out. Yeah, there's no other. Mm -hmm. That there's no there's no one to turn to. Yeah, when I was solo um, in Ireland by myself, that was my first international trip I took by myself, and that was a whole different. Th I um I had to get on a a train. And I like couldn't figure out the the train situation going from like London up to Liverpool because I wasn't in Ireland just yet. I was gonna take a ferry over. Okay. Um, things went wrong, and I just kind of figured it out and uh, hoped for the best. <laughs> and it was like, well, I'm I'm on a train, and I think it's going in the correct direction. I pulled up my maps and was like watching the train move. I was like, all right, I'm headed towards where I <laughs> should be going. <laughs> if someone comes along, I'll be like, I didn't, I don't know, I have a ticket. I think this is the ticket for the train I'm on. <laughs> no one was there to help me, and I was, like, running to it, and you just got to, you just got to be okay with things going wrong and just be like, well, we're going to figure it out. And I think yeah. I, I ended up being on the right train. Oh, <laughs> well, okay. I, maybe, maybe the right train. <laughs> it got me where I was needing to go. I still don't know if it was the correct one. No one came and checked my ticket, so. Oh, was, okay. <laughs> but I All paid right. for a ticket. <laughs> So, I, so so that's the, what's the message today? Go for it. Go yeah. for it. Go for it. Things will go wrong, but it, you know what? It's going to be a good story. <laughs> it's going to be a good story. Uh, you, well, you know I feel that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for letting me pick your brain. Yeah. I always love hearing about these about your excursions for the reasons that I've said. So All right. You can call us. You can you can leave Jenna a voicemail. Oh. Let, let her know what you think about this episode. One eight 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 Earpod One. I, I, I'm, Is that I'm okay? Glad that you are listening. Was that okay? You've been that's good. Okay, that was thank good. you. That was I can't harmonize the way you and that Red good, harmonize. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I th I think I found a replacement. <laughs> Hashtag Ear Biscuits. Talk at you next week. Hey, Rhett and Link. This is Gavin from Missouri. And I just listened to your most recent podcast where Link was telling us about his trip. And I just want to say, Link, asking Post Malone about what kind of pillow he sleeps on is one of the most Link things I think I've ever heard you do. And I just want to say, love you guys. Uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>